much further to go, Tan. Almost there. Little beach. Woohoo! Finally here. This is paradise. Wow. Two people play. Glorious. Doesn't get any better. itself perches on a placid harbour edged by National Park. A rugged coastline of sculpted rocks, tranquil sandy beaches and nature trails through native bushland and plenty of historical sites to take in. Our favourite natural wonders were Tondurup National Park and Two People's Nature Reserve. Absolutely spectacular in natural beauty. We set off exploring Tondurup National Park's many and varied natural features. We started at the park's most popular site, The Gap. A raised platform leads from the parking and picnic area across the top of exposed granite slabs to reach The Gap's famous viewing platform, where you can venture out 40 metres above the surging sea. Around 1,350 million years ago, Antarctica and Australia collided, joining together and becoming neighbours for almost 1,300 million years. The spectacular continental collision is recorded by the rocks here in the park. Amazing. Don't look down. <laughs> From the gentle and mesmerising heaving of the big seas to the buffeting rush of wind and spray of the powerful southern ocean, how good does the ocean make you feel? bridge is a granite formation that looks just like a big rock bridge. This bridge is caused by the gradual wearing away of the granite rock by the Great Southern Ocean. It's just a minute's walk from the gap. Further along our drive, we walked along a track to see Cave Point Lighthouse. 
It was built in 1976, but it's no longer in operation. However, it is still used today as a satellite aid search and rescue ground receiver. What do you like about lighthouses, Pete? Always liked lighthouses. My uh, great uncle was a lighthouse keeper. Was he? Yeah, he was a Byron Bay lighthouse keeper. And he spent many, many years in all the parts of Australia doing lighthouse keeping. So whenever I see one, I think of him and think of the loneliness that he would endure, but maybe he, maybe he liked it, Tom. Yeah, there's a real mystery to lighthouse keepers, isn't there? And it's a uh, way of living in isolation. And the, uh, imagine how good the fishing would be. Oh, absolutely. You, know, <laughs> you like fishing and you're a lighthouse keeper, you just whiz down there, throw a line in, and you've got fresh tuna, sashimi for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> no complaints from me. I wonder why it is that we seem to be able to really enjoy a location when we're sort of here by ourselves more. I think we can just sit in the environment and just enjoy it, just look at each, each aspect of it, um, film it, photograph it, and just stop and look and listen without any interruptions, to be honest. It enables us just to have a moment of deeper connection with nature um, without, you know, having, having any distraction. I think it just enables you to really connect with the place you're in. As I'm walking back to the car, I'm just remembering one really beautiful person who had a huge effect and influence in my life. And that was my beautiful grandmother, Hazel Seddon. She taught me to see the beauty in everything. Uh, and she also spoke about the silver linings. Within every cloud, there's a silver lining. I find these beautiful little dried flowers, whatever they might be, they're so beautiful in their decay. Yeah, so I just take my hat off to Nana. Thank you so much for teaching me to stop and see the joy in the simple pleasures and to stop and look at the beauty in nature. It's all around us. Just got to stop and take notice. There's just layers and layers of beautiful low-lying coastal heathland. I mean, the variety of natives here in this beautiful park is just incredible. We then went along and checked out salmon holes. There's a quote I found by David Henry Thoreau that perfectly matches this experience. Live each season as it passes. Breathe the air, drink the drink, taste the fruit and resign yourself to the influence of the earth. We certainly drank it all in at the spectacular Salmon Holes Beach with its stunning sweeping bay enclosed by a tall, steep slope of granite and heath-covered dunes. It's located at the western end of Isthmus Bay, ending at Ball Head. The view from the lookout above Salmon Holes is one of the most photographed views in the Tundurup Peninsula. It's known to be one of the best places for beach fishing in Albany. All right, so I'm beginning the walk down to the stunning Salmon Holes Beach. There's quite a few stairs to get down. 
So I'll catch you down there. Pete's going to stay at the top and put the drone up and send her out. I'm just looking up in disbelief because I could very well be the only person on this magical beach right now. No way. I am I'm speechless. I'm the only one here except for the seagulls. Just having one of those moments where um, I'm kind of thinking, am I lost in paradise or what? Okay, now for the walk up the steps. Oh, it's so worth it. How was that, Pete? I absolutely uh, flew the hell out of that drone. And <laughs> you know, watched you walk up and down those stairs. <laughs> yeah, probably a good thing it was me. <laughs> I tell you what, too much choice, hey? Oh, look, you know, how do you define it? It's just so beautiful everywhere here, and you just find that, you know, like putting it together is going to be so hard. <laughs> I just have to devote one episode to this location, hey? What a feeling when you snag a water's edge campsite overlooking the sweeping panorama of stunning Shoal Bay in Albany, Western Australia. At Panorama Caravan Park, you couldn't get anywhere more peaceful to stay when visiting Albany. And also, it's just a stone's throw from beautiful Tondurup National Park.
To stay in one spot and linger for a little while longer often means you get to witness nature's continual state of change. One morning we rose to the most beautiful sight as we opened the door of our caravan, looked out over the water to the east and we couldn't believe what we saw. It was one of those days when nature never ceases to amaze us. Beautiful morning this morning. The sun's just come up and I've got the drone up and it's just absolutely beautiful up there. It's just like flying a helicopter. I mean, it's just so beautiful. And you can look through the camera and you can look down and you can look up and then move around and there's the sun. Morning everyone. Morning. Feeling very blessed today. We have a picture perfect day. I think it's the best day weather wise we've had since we've left, left Brisbane middle of January this year. And it's my birthday. <laughs> so, <Big parade. laughs> so Pete's got a couple of surprises in store for me. Yeah, I've got uh, a secret squirrel lunch. We're going to go to a picnic. But at the moment we're um, driving over to a beach because it's so pitch perfect and warm to have a swim. But it's a bit of a special place to have, isn't it? Yeah, it's called Two People's Bay and, you know, in the photos it looks something out of this world. Beautiful. So, can't wait. Uh, we'll take you there with us today. Let's go. This lovable beach in Australia's southwest might be called Little Beach, but boy, it's big on its stunning views. Located in Two People's Bay Nature Reserve, just 35 kilometres from Albany. Not much further to go, Tart. Almost there. Little Beach. Woohoo! Finally here. This is paradise.
So here we are at Two People's Bay. It is uh, really beautiful, white sandy beaches, turquoise clear waters, and we are just walking up the beach towards the boulders, but it is magnificent. Really and truly, it was so worth coming here. We waited a, an extra couple of days for this good weather, and we've got a cracker of the day, so happy. Just so good. I've got a wetsuit on, it's only 3 mil, but um, it's just swimming out there, it's just a joy. How was your swim? Oh, okay, it was amazing, you feel alive, that's for sure. It was a bit cool at first, but once you get in, you know you've arrived. Fantastic. Wow. Two people say, glorious. Doesn't get any better. Mmm, best birthday ever. Good morning everyone. Beautiful, beautiful morning here in Albany and Pete and I have decided we're going to go and look at something really special today, uh, part of Australia's uh, wartime history. We're going to go up and visit the gorgeous Anzac Centre which is supposed to be absolutely amazing. Looking forward to today Pete? Very much so. I love history, I love war history and uh, going to the war memorial here at Albany is going to be very special today. The National Anzac Centre is located overlooking the actual harbour from which just over 41,000 men and women departed for the Great War. This award-winning facility uses multimedia, interactive technology and historical artefacts to create a deeply personal connection with the past as well as pay tribute to those who served. It's open from 9 till 5 Monday to Sunday. We were really moved by the Pool of Reflection, which is a thought-provoking exhibit where the names are recorded of the 41,265 Australians and New Zealanders who left on the first and second convoy in World War I. At the Museum of the Great Southern in the township of Albany, you'll find a permanent and travelling exhibitions, a replica of the Brig Amity ship, pop-up artworks, public and educational programs and information on the natural and social history of Albany's region. We really enjoyed the Australian Geographic Nature Photographer of the Year competition, which is produced by the South Australian Museum and we were immersed in the beauty of the natural world.
The day had come to leave Albany and we begin to work our way towards Denmark and William Bay National Park. Well, our time's come to an end here in Albany. It's been a fantastic stay. It's been a, an amazing spot we've had here at Panorama Caravan Park, right on the beach and overlooking the city. This is the third time we've been at this caravan park and the staff here are the most accommodating. I'll do anything for you. They're so friendly. They even walk you down to the site so that you know which one it is. There's actually plenty of room between all the sites. And um, then you've just got the view. The view is uh, amazing. One of the huge bonuses about staying here at Panorama Caravan Park is that just down the road here, about a 10 minute drive, you can access some of the most beautiful uh, bays and beaches and there's a couple of other quite well-known sites out there uh, but also salmon holes the famous beach uh, Frenchman's Bay it's all out here the whaling station the whaling which station. is so preserved how it was as sad as it is but at least it's the truth and you can see it um, so you can pop in to that spot as well as Misery Beach allow I reckon you could easily allow three or four days here at Panorama Caravan Park and then just popping up and going to all these different locations, have a swim, have a snorkel. There's hikes through the, um, through the place. It's a very special part of um, Western Australia. Yeah, we've absolutely loved it. Where are we heading today, Pete? Well, we're going to Denmark. Well, we're going through Denmark and we're going to stay at a, in a vineyard. And this vineyard's called Duckett's uh, Farm and Vineyard. And it's got uh, a cellar door and it also sells cheeses, salamis. And then we're going to stay there for about a week. But the special thing about it is that our niece is currently living in the area. Can't wait to catch up with them and Mitch, it's going to be an awesome time. Them being locals, we're hoping they're going to show us around the sites and from what we've seen already online, it's just going to be amazing. So we're not quite out of Albany yet. We. Um, we thought we'd go up to the wind farm. Take a little detour, and um, we've got the caravan on. I got Google Earth out and I had a look at the parking and the turnaround space, and it looks like it's just a big loop. So we're coming up now. This wind farm is one of the most spectacular and largest wind farms in Australia. Wind Farm Walk offers spectacular views of the eco-friendly turbines along the Tornderup Peninsula at Sandpatch. The wind turbine towers are 65 metres tall with a 50 tonne generator on top being driven by three 35 metre blades, longer than the wing on a Boeing 747 jumbo jet, just to give you some idea. The turbines sit on top of an escarpment which is windy every week but one, which is why they produce 80% of Albany's needs. At top speed, the blades appear to move very slowly, one revolution every three seconds. However, the ends of the blades are travelling at an awesome 290 kilometres an hour. Look out. Thanks for joining us and we will now leave you with some beautiful footage of last night's moon rising over Shoal Bay as we spent our last night in Albany.
for watching. We hope you enjoyed this episode, traveling along with us as we toured through Albany and its surrounding national parks. If you're enjoying our content, please be sure to like by hitting the thumbs up icon under this video and also subscribe by giving the subscribe button one click so that we can give you a notification and let you know when our next episode is up live. Safe and happy travels always.